The really big challenge is something like this gravel yeah. because it shifts yeah. under my feet. And even though you think that bricks like this wouldn't be different from bricks like that, they are. They are. And the pattern scares me. I don't know how to yeah. see it and coordinate yeah. with it right at first. And then even these bricks, because they're so much smaller and yeah. closer together. A different pattern again. A different pattern challenged my foot in a different way. It's such an intricate thing to learn to walk again on different surfaces. You're performing like if you were on hard floor. I do, but that's because <laughs> I practiced for eight years. When I had my stroke, I was in the middle of living my lifelong dream. All my life, through all the different things I'd done, I loved to make art, and I wanted to illustrate a children's book. And this is the very first painting. This is the one that I did that the publisher approved, which started the whole book. I got the publisher's approval for the drawings. I got the publisher's approval for the first painting and I was on a roll. And along came those strokes and picked me up out of my studio and set me down in the hospital, unable to move, unable to walk, completely wiping out my dream. But my right side was affected too. My experience of despair was very deep. I couldn't understand how I would get better. I didn't know people got better. All I saw for myself was a future of misery and disability, and I had no idea how I would function. The activity of walking, the activity of being upright, is part of what we are as human beings. So not only does the body become affected, but the mind, the psyche, and the spirit become affected. We know each other literally face to face. I always ask my patients who tell me, I, I just want to walk. I always ask them, what does walking mean to you? It's one of my favorite questions. Just today, a patient said to me, um, you know, walking means independence to me. It means freedom. It means hikes. It means meditation. It means prayer, prayer with God. To learn to walk, I first had to learn to stand up. To learn to stand up, I had to find my balance. My trunk muscles were injured. They were uncoordinated. Finding my balance was very difficult. Everybody wants to just get up and walk. Can we just walk today, patients say all the time. And if you talk to any physical therapist, they'll tell you that it takes days and weeks sometimes to prepare somebody for walking. There's a favorite poem I remember from Langston Hughes, a beat poet in the 50s. Hold fast to dreams for when dreams die. Life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. And I think that that has a lot to do with rehab. We keep hope alive, and it's real hope. It's not artificial hope. And if we can be the walking representation of that hope, then so be it. One day in the rehab center, my physical therapist had me stand up and asked me to take a step by myself. I didn't really believe that I could do it. I didn't think it was possible, but you knew yep. that I could take a step. I took one step. That one step is again something I'll never forget. To be able to do that on my own was the beginning of walking. You want to walk? Don't give up. Because I didn't give up, because I was able to actually make a recovery, that book has been published. This is the book I illustrated. This is my dream come true. It is as if this book was meant to be, to tell this story, because it's called Just for Today, and it's about concentrating on what life can give you now, which is part of the art of recovery and part of the art of learning to walk again.